That's does what the scriptures say. Why does it matter? I'll take my hat off. It does matter. I'll, I'll praise to the most high. Why does like, it matter? Uh, in the Old Testament, it says um, an eye for an eye, right? Uh huh. Well, do, we, do we apply that today? An eye for an eye. Yeah. Do we apply you that eye, today? You get to stab me in the eye, in other words. Do we apply that today? Give me that Acts chapter 2. Hey. <laughs> oh, Priggity. Huh? My man talk that talk. Yeah. Uh. What? What? Say ya, uh, pray ya. Can't make it to heaven. Lost will, we can. Get rid of this laughing, ayy. To the pearly gates, we had it on. Uh. To the pearly gates, we had it on. Uh. To the pearly gates, we had it on. Uh. To the pearly, ayy. Say ya. Uh. I'm just packing my bags, get ready for disaster. Heard my king getting mad, and as a certain man, son, that my love coming back. And when he do, it's gonna be five for that. And I'm all waiting in water. Why? So, so is there a way for us to get out of this? Give me a uh, first. Give me Acts chapter three and verse nineteen. Acts chapter three and verse nineteen. How do we get out of this? Because this sin thing is is serious. Read that. Right. The book of Acts chapter three, verse nineteen. Repent, ye therefore. Do what? Repent, ye therefore. God says that what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to repent. Come on. And be converted. And be converted. What converts us? Psalms chapter nineteen. And verse 7. He says, repent therefore and be converted. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. Our law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. God says that the law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. Our law changes us. You see, give me Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 28. This is again, remember how early I was showing you that we're in captivity because we've broken God's commandments? I'm gonna show you another curse, right? It just walked across just now. I'm gonna show you another one of the curses. Read that. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. You know what I mean to be stricken with madness? It means you lose your damn mind. You're crazy. Look at the sister. She's been stricken with madness. And that's a result of drug abuse. That's that young man that was smoking that weed earlier. Guess what? If he continues down the path that he's on, that's, right. that's gonna be him. Right. That's right. That's gonna be him. Right. And that's gonna be all of you yeah. if you if you are abusing drugs right now. Right. If you're playing with weed, if you're playing with drugs right now, that's gonna be you. That's how God judges His people. Right. Read it again. Right. That's the Verse truth. Verse 28. The Lord shall smite thee with madness. He will strike you with madness. You'll lose your everlasting mind. Come on. And blindness and astonishment of heart and blindness. You can't even see that you're crazy. That's what happened to the sister. That's what happened to the sister because she didn't want to keep God's commandments. Go back to Psalms 19 and verse 7 because it said that the law, something converts us. He said, repent and be converted. Read that. The book of Psalms, chapter 19, verse 7. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. That's why the Bible says the law of the Lord is perfect. It, it converts your soul. The law of the Lord, when you apply God's commandments, it changes something in your spirit. Like for y'all sisters, Amen. when you put on a dress, right, according to the commandments, when you keep that commandment, it does something right. to your spirit. Like it makes you feel better yeah. because you're applying what God's word says to do. Bring it out. You understand that? Bring That's what he said. He said, he said the laws, they convert you. They change you. That's how you get right. Come on. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And it makes you wise, right? It makes you wise. Let me give you another commandment. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. Because I want to show you, I want to show you the order. I want to show you the order. Now, you may not have something. As a matter of fact, you got a, you got a hood? No, you ain't got a hood. I'm, I'm going to show you something when the Bible's coming out. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ. So the Bible says that the head of every man is Christ. Come on. 
And the head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. A lot of women today in 2020, they got a problem with that. Some of them, they got a problem with that. They want to be the man, right? And look, and what's one of the sayings, what's one of the sayings that they say in a household when it comes to a man and a woman? They'll say, whoever wear the pants. The man will say, I'll wear the pants. I'll wear the pants. What does he mean when he say he wearing the pants? It means that he's in charge. So why should women be wearing pants? They shouldn't be, according to this, because what, what was the order? The head of the woman is the man. The head of the woman is the man. So the woman shouldn't be wearing the pants in the house. The woman should be wearing a dress or a skirt, a, a, a modest dress or a modest skirt, because the man is supposed to be the head of the house. And you men out here, if you have children and you are not being the man of your house, you need to fix yourself. You need to get it right. You understand? If you if you land in a bed with a woman and she not your daggone wife, you need to get married. That's right. Them daggone papers. Bring it. And the head of Christ is God. So it said the head of the man is the head of the man is Christ. Wait, no, the head of God, the head of the head of the man is Christ, right? The head of the woman is the man, and then the head of Christ is God. Read on. Every man praying or prophesying. So the Bible says every man that's praying or prophesying. What does it mean to prophesy? Right? What does it mean to prophesy? Praying is clear. Like we understand it when it says every man that's praying, right? Every man that's praying, meaning you're talking to the Lord. But what does that word mean, prophesy? Read. The book of Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10. Because the Christian churches I had you thinking, the Christian churches I had you thinking that prophesying is somebody saying, I'm going to speak over your life. That's not what prophesying is. I'm going to show you what prophesying is according to the Bible. Read. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou, do it not. I am thy fellow servant. And of thy brethren, that have the testimony of Jesus. Testimony of Jesus. Worship God for a testimony the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Is the spirit of prophecy. This whole Bible is the testimony of Jesus. So anytime the Bible is coming out, if it's being read, if it's being preached, that's prophecy. That's, right. that's the spirit of prophecy. Right. Let's go back to that verse. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 11, verse 4. Every man praying or prophesying. This is every man praying or prophesying. So every man that's praying, talking to God, or is around when the Bible is coming out. Like right now. Right now, you are in the midst of prophecy. Everybody under my ears, you're in the midst of prophecy. Come on. Every man. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. You dishonor your head if you have a hat on while the Bible is coming out. You are dishonoring your head if you have a hat on and the Bible is coming out and you're a man. That's what the Bible says. All praise. No, keep it off. As long as the Bible is coming out, you're not. If you're a man, you're not supposed to have anything on your head. That's because right. In that right. case, right. what you are doing is you're dishonoring your head. Right. What is your head? Who's the king? Christ. Who's the king? Christ. You're dishonoring Christ. Come on. Verse 5. But every woman. But every woman. That prayeth or prophesieth with her head uncovered. So if a woman is praying or prophesying and she don't have a hair wrap on, a scarf, a hood, she's leaving her head uncovered. Come on. Dishonoring her head. She's dishonoring her head, which Wait, is the man. The Old Testament, the New Testament. This is the New Testament. This is the New Testament. Give me that Hebrews chapter, uh, volume of the book. Hebrews chapter 10. Okay. Hebrews chapter 10. The brother said, is it the Old Testament or the New Testament? The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 7. Then said, I, lo, I come in the volume of the book. See, Christ came in the volume of the whole Bible, from Genesis to Revelation. It doesn't matter if it's the old or the new. If the Bible is coming out and you're a man, you're supposed to have you're supposed to take your head off. You're supposed to take your head off. That's what the scriptures say. Why does it matter? Take my hat off. It does matter. I'll praise to the most high. Why does it matter? In the Old Testament it says, um, an eye for an eye, right? Uh-huh. Well, do, do we apply that today? An eye for an eye. Yeah. Do we apply that today? You get to stab me in the eye, in other words. Do we apply that today? Give me that Acts chapter 2. Do we apply that in the New Testament? Do we apply that today? What has changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament? I want Acts chapter 10, 13. 13. Acts chapter 13. What has changed from the Old Testament to the New Testament? Read that. The book of Acts chapter 13. 13, verse 38. Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that through this man... Who is the man that's preached throughout the whole Bible? Jesus. Jesus. So 
So that through this man, through Jesus Christ, come on. That through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. So Christ brought forth the forgiveness of sins, come on. And by him, all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. So what that means is when Christ came on the scene, right, the consequences for sin, you would be justified by sins which you couldn't be justified under the law of Moses. Meaning, when you broke the commandments under the old covenant, yeah. right, well, you would get stoned. Same, right? You would get stoned. Yeah. That's what would happen. You would get stoned. If like, like what we were talking about, we were talking about earlier, uh, the, the woman not supposed to wear, thing, wear pants. In the Old Testament, you could get stoned for that. But under Christ, Christ now, Christ now is that sacrifice. Because you would even get stoned or you would have to give some type of sacrifice. You would have to give a turtle dove, a lamb, or something like that. But today, Christ became that sacrifice. But just because he's the sacrifice, does that mean that it's okay for you to go ahead and keep breaking the sin? No. God forbid. No. It's, about, it's time for you to change. What about that one story with uh, when they're going to stone the prostitute and then God says, if anybody has... Uh, do you mean, oh, okay, oh, that, that's a good... I like that. Let's go to that scripture. Give me that in John. I like that. Because there's something... There's something... Everybody bring up that... They bring up that parable about when a woman was caught in the midst of adultery, right? Right? They, everybody brings up that, that parable to try to say that it, for that reason, it's okay for us to continue in sin. Let's see what Christ said to her. The book of John, chapter 8, verse... I started one. Verse 1. Bring it out! Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. So this woman was caught in the midst of breaking God's commandments. Come on. And when they had set her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. She was taken in the very act of adultery. Now, the question, I'm not even going to get in it. I'm going to leave that where it's at. Go ahead. Verse 5. Now, when Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned, but what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped down, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as though he heard them not. So, he said, who are your accusers? What's going on with your accusers, right? And he went and wrote something in the ground. Jump down to verse 10. When he, after he wrote something in the ground, all the Pharisees, the scribes, they disappeared. They got low. And the reason why they got low is because they, if they caught the sister in the very act, how come they only brought the sister? Why come they didn't bring the man? Where was the man? He was in the midst of adultery as well. They didn't bring him, but go ahead. Verse 10. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Not Neither do I condemn thee. You know what it means when he says, neither do I condemn thee? Do you know what it means to be condemned? Like right now, we're standing in front of a courthouse, right? There are some people in that courthouse that have committed crimes by which they can be condemned to what? To death. You can be condemned to death. What was going on in this verse right here? The people, they were about to condemn the sister to death. You know. And Christ says, no, I'm not going to put you to death for breaking God's commandments. However, Bring it out. neither do I condemn thee. Go, go, and sin no more. He said, go and do what? Go, and sin no more. He says, stop breaking God's commandments. Right. Stop breaking God's commandments. Right. I'm giving you a grace period to get yourself. Stop breaking God's commandments. Right. You understand that? So just because he let the sister go, it don't mean that you're free to keep breaking God's right. commandments. He said, no, go and sin no more. Stop breaking the commandments. Right. Because look, again, again, we brought this out. We're bringing out, we're bringing out repentance. We're bringing out who this Bible is for. Read. The book of Acts, chapter 3, verse 19. Repent ye therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Right, so what does it mean to actually repent? You know what it means to repent? Sister said, she said, it means to ask for forgiveness. It means to ask for forgiveness. Give me Ezekiel chapter 18 and verse 30. Let's see what it means to actually repent. Right. 
the book of Ezekiel, chapter 18, verse 30. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Remember, keep that word. He said, I'm going to judge you, O house of Israel. So y'all got to understand, this Bible is only written to the children of Israel. That's the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. Come on. O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God, repent. Do what? Repent. Do what? Repent. And turn yourself. And do what? And turn yourself. And do what? And turn yourselves from all your transgressions. Repent means to turn yourself from your transgression. It means to stop doing it. So now, we just brought out this law, right, about pants. How do you repent from wearing pants? Excuse me? You ever seen that one movie with the slaves? Hold on one second, brother. Hold on one second, brother. We have an order. I'm talking to the sister. You know what I'm saying? Be respectful. Be respectful. All right? Be respectful. So so how, how do you repent from wearing pants? Put on... Dresses. Exactly. You wear dresses. You wear modest dresses, right? You stop wearing the pants. That's how you repent. That's how all that's how you repent from all sin. You just stop doing it. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. I, you, I, see, we deliver the truth.